Welcome back to Game Day Final. Jordan Whittington now joining us. Jordan, did you talk to your friend Bevo beforehand like the regular I did, season? Man. I almost <laughs> forgot, but I came back out there and made another oh. round. And yeah, I told him if I was going to score, I was going to jump on the cage this time. But. So you big you, you big time. You almost <laughs> forgot him. <laughs> nah, <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. I'm just trying oh, to keep man. it. You know, you big time. Now you forgot about me. I ain't forget quick. about my boy, man. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> How'd you feel about your performance today? Uh, I felt good. Um, my biggest thing today was to be able to be a leader because Coach Jackson, uh, he was on the orange team. So I was over there trying to lead my guys and do everything that I need to do and just be that um, self safety valve for Quinn whenever he needed it. And I think uh, I got open a lot today. So. I talked to you earlier in the week about your leadership role. You said you're really taking that seriously, coming yeah. back for a fifth <clears throat> year, and you've embraced that, and the coaches told me they've absolutely noticed that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, obviously we had Roshan last year, so I didn't have to do as much, but um, now that he's gone, I got to step up into that role, and that's something that I've taken a lot of pride in, and I've been working on. I never was a vocal guy, even in high school, but um, just throughout this whole college experience, I've got more comfortable with it, and I got a lot of respect in the locker room, so it works. New nickname, Mr. First Down, is yeah. what I'm referencing to. <laughs> and, and here's the ironic part. I don't even yeah. know if you switched your jersey because of this, but the one for the first downs. And, the and then three. the three, because a lot of times you have the third down conversions yeah, yeah, yeah. as Quinn's <laughs> outlet. What is your feelings about how you've progressed, how mm. Quinn has progressed in this offense, the way that you view yourself and how you feel that this season can go and your utilization within? Uh, man, so we got so many weapons on the outside now that I can be where I'm most comfortable, which is in that slot and just working between the hashes and just finding the sticks and getting there. And uh, me and Quinn have a lot of chemistry. As you can see, like, he'll throw it before I'm looking and it'll be right there. And we just got some type of connection when it comes to that. And then we got these guys on the outside that will take the top off and they'll give me one-on-one. -on -one, so I get to take advantage of it. Fellas, nothing. <laughs> I got I mean, some. Geez. Are we on the air here? No, no, no. no. So, as a, good? So, as a, as a, it's not good. That was good. No, it's not. That was good. It was a great answer, but it's not good. But listen, let's okay. get back to where we're going right now. <laughs> so the one thing I noticed is we go back early in career, playing the running mm. back position. We go back to being a quarterback slash everything when it comes to coming from the high school level. Yep. But I don't think people quite understand the dynamic of when you have the, the ball in your mm -hmm. hands, the way that you run with it. I saw yeah. that today. But the question is, who do you kind of mimic? Like when you're studying film and things, who do you watch? Who do you try to mimic your game after? Man, I would say uh, Debo Samuel or even like an Alvin Kamara. Um, okay. Someone who can just, you get them in space and they turn into a running back when they get the ball. And um, I try my best to like make the first person miss and stuff like that. But if I had to name two players, it would be those two. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this other question. I'm looking at you right now and it looks like your body, you, you changed. Yeah. It seems like you lost some weight. Mm -hmm. Now you're trying to be more quicker, more yeah. agile. Now has that helped you with just staying healthy and things of that nature? Definitely. Um, I've changed my diet. Uh, I do eat. I, I didn't eat ice cream for a whole month. By Ooh, the way, congratulations. so I get to get back on <laughs> it tonight. So I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited. But yeah, I changed my whole diet. I tried to get down. I was 215 my freshman year. Yeah, you was. You was yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> back you, was down. <laughs> you, was little, you was a little heavy out there. Yeah, man. <laughs> so uh, I'm 202 right now, and it just feels good. I can move way better. And just my instincts, they move quicker, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm more fast twitch. And that's kind of how I have to be going against these DBs. I'm not running back anymore. So mm -hmm. my one on ones aren't necessarily a big body. They're. Uh, little guys that can move. So gotcha. having being smaller, I get to use it to my advantage. Gotcha. I, I want to go back to the leadership aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you hit on it just a little bit. But too yeah. many times people think that you can thrust yourself into a leadership role, and people don't yeah. understand that in order to be a leader on the team, your team has to put you in that yeah. mode. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about when was your aha moment that, like, hey, I'm officially, like, the leader of this wide receiver room. Yeah. Like, I got to step up. You said you're not a vocal guy. Mm -hmm. I got to step up and, and talk the talk and walk the walk. Uh, I think um, one of the factors is experience, just being here, um, being a guy that's done it for so many years. And then number two is just a guy that you see on the field. Like, I don't just talk. Like, I, I work hard. I do what I need to do. I'm not a guy that um, messes up with the little details. And uh, you get respect from that. And ultimately, that's the ultimate thing that will um, raise your level of uh, leadership role, if, if I can say that. But um, yeah, I think it's just respect. Once you get respect on the team, then people want to listen to you, they trust you, and they'll follow you. Yeah, and I, and I want to talk about the wide receiver room because we've talked about it a bunch, but 
it is a room that I am extremely excited about this year. You, yeah. you, you've got Mitchell that came in. You've got Jonte Cook. Mm. You've got Nayor that's that's getting healthy. So there's a lot, a lot of depth at yeah. that position. I feel like the wide receiver room is the new running back room this mm. year. And, yeah. uh, so I want to know your, your guys' excitement around that. Man, we're, we're super excited. I would say the main thing about us, we're so excited because we're so diverse and so different. You know, you got guys like – Xavier that can just run past you, route you up. You got AD that's super twitchy and can make any catch, run any route on the field. And you got me and DeAndre Moore in the slot that can work in between the hashes and Nayer, a guy that could jump on. Like, it's the whole room, man, has their own little thing. But that competitiveness that we have in the room is driving everybody to be great. And I think by the time we get to fall camp, we'll, we'll know exactly, you know, what we're going to look like. So I'm excited. Jay, we saw some of the new faces <coughs> with the young guys coming yeah. in. Jontae Cook, Moore you talked about. But what about coaching? We got mm. Coach Jackson coming in. Yeah. Obviously, you had Coach Marion. That transition being under Coach Jackson, obviously, mm. he coached with the Jaguars a yep. season ago. So you're getting that NFL-style coaching exactly. as well. Talk about how instrumental he has been this spring in getting you mm. to where you are right now. Uh, man, he's just he's a, he has a lot of respect for us. Right when he got in here, just we knew his accolades, where he came from. And we wanted, you know, an NFL guy, and we got one. And he's, he's, he's just that, man. He teaches us how it's going to be in the league. And just how it transfers over to when you get into the NFL and just basically just how the little details will get you. It will separate you that much more. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're, we've been really focused on this spring. And he's he's been really good at implementing that in us. And then another reason I love him individually is because he's making me lead. You know, he'll yep. just like today I was on the white team and I had the lead. He wasn't there. So just doing stuff like that and putting guys in position where they're not as comfortable and just learning to be comfortable in that position, that's another reason why. He's a great guy. So, so I got this last <clears throat> question. I know y'all hear me. I'll be talking, running out of breath. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you. I'm going to ask this, I'm gonna ask this question, and you can tell me. You, as of lately, I see guys. You had last year DeMarvion Overshone decide mm -hmm. to stay another year, had that option. Yeah. You had Coburn decide to stay another year and had that option. You had the same option to stay. Man. What made you decide to stay? Oh, man. It was so one of the factors, which is I'm going to be vulnerable right here. One of them was fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know how, and I'm writing a, I'm writing a thing about this. I'm gonna try to get put in the Players Tribune. But one was fear. I didn't know exactly what I would do if it didn't go my way. I wasn't prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, another one was I've always wanted to win the Big 12. And I think this year we're gonna do something really special. So that was another one. And then, other than that, man, I just felt like I had more to prove. I think last year I left a lot of stuff on the, um, on the plate, on the table, and. Uh, to use a metaphor, kind of like if an animal was against the wall and he had a door out. I think last year I took the door, the doorway out, mm -hmm. and then now there's nothing there, so I gotta fight. I gotta do everything that I can do to get out, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. So that is a very yeah. candid and that humble is, answer. That, that is, <laughs> I I think, no, because you remember I saw you one time we had this yeah, conversation, yeah, 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 yeah. and you was I'm like, ah, and I was like, right, you I know. didn't take full advantage. And, so I, now, and I asked yeah. you, what was you? All, 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 we was walking, and we yeah. had that conversation. I said, what are you gonna do? Do what you know? Do what <laughs> you feel is best for you. And you said, I just yeah. wanted to see what made you return. Yeah. We go to break on a high note. Go enjoy the ice cream, by the way. You deserve it. I'm looking forward to it. Bring me some too. It's hot out here. It's hot out here. What flavor though? Chocolate chip cookie dough. Bluebell. Holla at me. Hey. Bell. There we go. I've been trying so hard. And I get one flavor for one week. He really oh, wanted yeah. Gigi's cupcake, but it's cool. The one and only Jordan Whittington.